Hallelujah. Again, we are coming at the feet of Jesus as in the last uh, session. Uh, we have learned um, that sitting at the feet of Jesus is something that is uh, happening in eternity. And when we are practicing it here, you know, we are practicing eternity. We are sitting at the feet of Jesus. As Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and she was hearing the voice of God. Of course, I know that she was seeing the face of God and uh, hearing the voice of Jesus. And maybe she was talking to Jesus. Uh, that is not written there, but I'm sure that when Jesus was teaching, uh, if she had some doubts, maybe she was asking it to Jesus. That's what we need to keep a kind of, not no officiality, just, you know, he is our master, he is our father, he is our everything. So you can talk to him. Uh, likewise, we need to practice devotion uh, in our daily life, in our personal life, in our family life. So that's what we are doing in this episode. So this week, this day, uh, I just want to read a passage from uh, Luke chapter 14. Uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 14 uh, verse 25 to 35 10 verses yeah now large crowds were traveling with him and he turned and said to them whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes and even life itself cannot be my disciple Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost, to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure heap. They throw it away. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Amen. So, uh, the last session, the first session of our series of message, uh, it was an introduction, just an introduction. And in fact, you know, this is the first uh, part of our series, Jesus' Feet. So, uh, I would like to... Uh, give a title for this uh, session sit down and count the cost so that's what Jesus says here so we have uh, we were reading the passage that Jesus said about sitting down and counting the cost see uh, we see uh, a person uh, who wanted to make a house uh, in my book, I was telling an example that a person called Ramu, let any name be there. Uh, he was uh, a person who was taking or, you know, working in a grocery shop, a small shop. And he thought of uh, making a house, but he didn't have much money. So all the money he had, uh, he bought a land. With that money, he bought a land. And uh, then... He did not have much money with him, so he started borrowing money from different people and uh, he uh, put a foundation for a three-story building. And uh, he thought money would come, but somehow that didn't happen. And you know what happened? He lost his job in the grocery shop. So he did not get salary that month. And uh, after a few months, you know, because he didn't have salary, he was uh, staying in a rented house and the owner of the house said, it is time for you to leave my house. So he didn't have a, 
a house to stay. The foundation was very good, a three-story building, but he didn't have money. So finally, with the help of many good people in the village, he made a small hut close to the foundation and started staying there. You get my point? He didn't have much to eat, nothing like that, but a big foundation for a three-story building. What the people will say about him? Hey, what this man he is a fool. Can't you see that he put foundation for a three-story building? And now he doesn't have money to finish it. Now he's staying in a, in a hut. You get my point? This is what Jesus says. That if a man want to make a house or a building, first of all, he need to sit down and count the cost. And he should decide whether he should start it. And if I start the, the building work, can I finish it? If you cannot finish it, it is better not to start it, right? It doesn't just speak about a building. Of course, even when you make a building, you need to be careful. But Jesus is not just talking about a building. And also he speaks about a king who is going to attack another king. And uh, we have no time to go through that story. But uh, uh, there is no big need because, you know, the, the meaning is the same. So when a king wants to attack another king, before he start attacking the king, when he is going with 10,000, he need to know with how many people he is coming. You get my point? So the message here is that before you start something, you need to sit down and count the cost. So here we know uh, that it speaks about discipleship or if anyone want to become a disciple of Jesus he says he need to sit down and count the cost because every people cannot become a disciple so in these days we never talk like this we say everybody come everybody come but Jesus you know it is very interesting it is written Verse 25, now great crowds accompanied him. You know, many, many, maybe thousands of people are following Jesus. And it is clearly written, he turned and said to them, you know, Jesus was walking and all the crowd were following Jesus. A big crowd. If a big crowd is following us, we will get thrilled, right? Wow, that's great, wonderful. Look, how many people are coming for my meeting. That's the reason why these mega churches and new generation, big, big churches or prophets, they say, look at the crowd that I have in my meeting. The crowd will come because they do not know the cost of discipleship. Jesus said, I don't need a crowd. I need only disciples. This, this is a very courageous statement of Jesus. He's just looking at the people. Hey, why you are following me? You know the cost you need to pay if you are following me. You think that it is a bed of roses? No. It's the way of the cross. Are you ready to pay the cost? If you're not ready to pay the cost, it's better for you to disperse and go back to your home and do what you want to do. Because if anyone would follow me, it is not a small thing. And he speaks about the cost of discipleship. Verse uh, 26 and 27. If anyone comes to me or follow me, that's and he... If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. It's something very, you know, it's a, it's a strong statement. When I, you know, a normal person cannot understand what Jesus is saying. He says, if you, are, if you want to become a disciple of mine, you need to hate your father and mother. What does it mean? 
the bible says you need to honor your father and mother right that is one of the basic commandments you get my point and why jesus says you need to hate your father and mother and the bible says that you need to love your wife right that's what we see in ephesians yeah? husbands love your wives here jesus says you need to hate your wife and we need to take care of our children but here we say jesus says what you need to hate your children you need to hate your brother eh huh? even jesus said that you need to love your brother right but here he says that you need to hate your brother that's where we need to understand the word hate the word hate is not uh, doesn't have a meaning that we have now when we hate somebody you know that person is outside your territory but here jesus says uh, i will try to um, say one example um, in the old testament and even in the new testament it is written even paul says that god loved jacob and hated isau okay when i was reading that passage many many times you know people ask me can god hate a person what does it mean god hated isau he loved jacob and hated isau what's the meaning of it you know the biblical meaning or you know when we read it in the biblical background hate and love is a a, a question of uh, you know choosing between two things if you have two choices which one you will choose if you have only two things to choose which one you will choose okay so suppose uh, you get a job in the uh, school to teach and you get uh, a chance to do a big business so you cannot do the do both the things so you are choosing something if one person says if i am going or working as a teacher or if i am working as a, uh, a, a somebody like that you know i'm not going to get much money but if i do business i'm going to get much money so one person is choosing to do the business and the other person says maybe i cannot make that much money but you know i want to serve the society so i want to continue as a teacher it's a choice you get me he is not hating the business person he is not hating the business but you know he is choosing to be a teacher rather than becoming a business person when here jesus says suppose a situation comes that you can choose only between me and your father whom will you choose if you say no i cannot leave my father and mother they are the people who uh, gave me all the things that i needed in my life so um, i cannot leave my father and mother and go off to jesus if you say like that you are not uh, you cannot be a disciple of jesus if you want to be a disciple of jesus you need to put jesus first that is the meaning you get my point so don't think that god or jesus is asking you to hate your father and mother nothing like that god wants you to love your father and mother god wants you to love your wife god wants you to love your children god wants you to love your brothers and sisters but if your brother is against you when you accept jesus and he says suppose sometimes you know that happens somebody accept jesus the father says i do not have a son like this get out from my house and i'm looking at my house and my house is a big house and with a lot of uh, you know inheritance and things like that if i leave my house i'm going to lose all my inheritance i say uh, dad uh, don't worry uh, uh, 
yeah, I love Jesus, but you know, don't worry, I will leave Jesus. I don't want to leave you. Then he is not fit for the discipleship of Jesus Christ. It's not only people, it's about religion, it's about your denomination, it speaks about your money, your position, anything. Anything, anything, anything. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you need to put Jesus first. That is the cost you need to become a discipleship, disciple of Jesus. And it is not only father, mother, wife, brother, sister, then even his own life. That's there. You get my point? Sometimes a time will come that you are going to lose your life because of Jesus. It can happen. It can happen. And if that situation comes, what will be your response? Will you, leave Je will you leave Jesus and opt to live in this world? Or will you opt your death and live for Jesus? And even die for Jesus? That's the question. So if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you are going to lose everything. This is exactly opposite what the crusade preachers are saying. The crusade preachers, the television preachers, they all say, you're going to get everything if you accept Jesus. Jesus says, you're going to lose everything if you accept me. So that is the reason why I say, 90% of the preachers of these days preach against what Jesus preached. And I tell you, my friends, Many popular preachers are preaching another Jesus. They are not preaching the Jesus of the Bible. They are preaching another Jesus. So Jesus himself says, if anyone would follow me, then he need to learn to put me first. More than his father, his mother, his brother, his wife, his sister, even his own life. Only then they can be my disciple. And uh, you need to renounce everything. That's what we see in verse 27. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Bear his own cross. It is not bearing the cross of Jesus. It is easy to carry a cross on your neck. But it doesn't speak about a cross of gold or wood or anything like that. It doesn't speak about, the, about carrying a cross and walking on the road. Nothing like that. It speaks about your own cross. It is easy for the people at G the time of Jesus to understand this passage. Because in these days, uh, you know, uh, cross is, we see it only uh, on top of a, a, a temple of God. Something like that. A, a church. But you know, in those days... A cross is a thing that people are hanged on when a capital punishment is pronounced for a non-Roman. So, if you are a citizen of Rome in those days, naturally, you will be, you, if you get a capital punishment, you will be beheaded. And if you are not a citizen of Rome, if you are a Jew, you will be crucified. That's the reason why Paul was beheaded and Peter was crucified. Paul was a citizen of Rome and uh, no Roman citizen will be crucified. You get my point. So, when a capital punishment is pronounced on a court, a cross is there and it is the responsibility of that person to carry the cross to the place where he will be hanged. So all that road, he need to carry his own cross. And when he reaches there, he will be hanged on the cross. So if you see somebody carrying a cross and walking on the road, 
that shows that he is going to die in few hours. So Jesus says, if you want to be a disciple of mine, you need to live as if you are going to die today. A person who is going to die today will never say, yeah, I'm going to die today anyway. Uh, so I want to see that I'm buying 10 acre land somewhere. He doesn't speak like that. Right? He is not fond of anything of this world. And Jesus says, it is quite possible if you are following me, it is quite possible that you will be killed, murdered by others. So see your death before you if you want to follow me. You get my point, point my friends? This is the cost of discipleship that you need to deny if yourself. To deny yourself. And that's the reason why Jesus said about the cost of discipleship in different passages. We have no time to read all those passages. In Matthew it is clearly written, if anyone would follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny himself. Now, maybe we are living in a situation where no one will kill you just because you are a Christian. And it can happen anywhere. But what I say, just because of that, don't think that, oh, there is no need to take up a cross. Jesus says that if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, live as if this is the last day of your life. The positive thinking, positive thinking books, and no, they say, live this day as it live as it this day is the first day of the rest of your life so forget about all your past this is the first day of your life so live like that that is a secular thinking but the biblical thinking is just opposite jesus says live this day as uh, if as if it is the last day of your life only then you can be a disciple of Jesus. And you are denying yourself. When you deny yourself, you doesn't have any kind of lust for this worldly things. Nothing like that. You are not thinking about grabbing money. You are not thinking about buying big cars. You are not thinking about, you know, exploiting others and becoming a big uh, rich person. Nothing like that. Nothing will come to your mind. Because you are taking up your cross. So if you want to be a disciple, always see a cross on your shoulder. And in the last verse, verse 33, we again see, so therefore, any one of you who do not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Jesus says, if you want to build a house, sit down and, cost, and count the cost. What is the cost? First of all, you need to put Jesus first. And everybody else is behind you. Second thing, you need to live as if this is the last day of your life. Third thing, even you need to give up what you have. Nobody teaches about it. Jesus says, if anyone want to follow me, if anyone of you who do not renounce all that he has, cannot be my disciple. This is not my words. This is the words of Jesus. So that is why I say, the preachers of this age, they are liars. No one says that you need to leave everything and follow Jesus. Everybody say, you're going to get everything when you follow Jesus. That is a lie. That is a lie. God will give you something to eat and that's offered. I'm not saying that God will put you in trouble and everything will be away from you. Nothing like that. But, what is your attitude towards everything? If you lose all these things, will you follow Jesus? Otherwise, don't follow him. That's the reason why the 
next uh, verse it says that see salt is good but if salt lost has lost its taste how shall its saltiness be restored jesus says a true disciple is like a salt and a half hearted disciple is like tasteless salt so if you want to be a disciple you need to be like the salt you know what is the speciality of the salt many many things i have no time to explain it maybe some other passage we will do but one thing i will say you put salt in a dish you know what happens the salt melts and gives taste to the dish you take suppose you know you put a, a piece of salt and even if you take it back nothing of this dish you will taste in the salt salt is salt always but you put it in this the dish that food tastes salt the salt is always losing the salt doesn't gain anything but you know it gives taste to others a disciple is like that a disciple in this world is the, the a disciple is here not to gain much things he's going to lose everything and he is happy because he could give taste to many people so if you want to be a disciple i tell you my friends you need to count the cost many many things you're going to lose in many passage it is said about the cost of discipleship we'll go through that sometimes later but before i finish this devotion this time let's ask ourselves do we follow jesus by understanding what kind of cost we need to pay when we are following him are we are we like the multitude you know the multitude were following jesus i'm sorry to say a large percentage of christians even those who call themselves born again christians they did not sit down and count the cost of discipleship but now it is time for us to surrender ourselves and tell jesus jesus i count your discipleship is more worthy than anything in the world even the whole even even if i'm losing the whole world i will not leave you i will not leave you not turning back not turning back let's close our eyes wherever you are you all know the song not turning back let's sing that song from our heart as a prayer close your eyes i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back no turning back no turning back lord we come to your presence of jesus we declare that 
we are your disciples and we will never turn back we know that it is the path of the cross we are not expecting a bed of roses and we know the cost of discipleship we want to renounce everything that we have we want to deny ourselves we want to take up our cross and follow you oh jesus help us to live the life of a disciple without failure in jesus name i pray amen